Hi, I'm Brenda E.M. As a lot of you might know that I've been working on this recycled CNC project. Since I finished it, I want to show you a safety upgrade I did on it, and I also want to talk about some of the accessories and also talk about what worked and what didn't. But first, before I start, I want to say I'm sorry to everyone who lost their homes, their loved ones, their pets, their lives, and the, and the California fires. And uh, my heart goes out to you, and I'm, I'm really sorry. And uh, I think it affects uh, a lot of people around here. And, uh, well, you're noticed. And um, I'm sorry. When I was working on this machine um, and testing the spindle motor, I had a little bucket of water that I used to test the spindle motor just to make sure it didn't overheat. And it got pretty warm, the water did. Um, and um, so I, w I went a a pretty far the other way. I got this huge storage bin, and um, I don't know exactly how many gallon it was. I haven't measured it, but um, so I probably had seven or eight gallons of water in that bucket, and so that's not cool. And um, um, it worked as a thermal mass, but hypothetically, because there's no way for the heat to leave the bucket and it'll probably insulate a little bit, that eventually it would, the water would become too warm to do a good job. And uh, so I wanted a continuous cooling solution, which means I have to get the heat away from the water. We're looking at the back of the machine. If you've been uh, watching along, this is the VFD or the variable frequency drive for the spindle motor. And this is a computer interface for the, uh, for the stepper uh, drivers. And uh, this is a pure kind of affair. Um, these are three power supplies slash uh, drivers for the uh, stepper motors. Here, this is, of course, is a cart. Right here, oddly enough, is a stainless steel radiator, which is pulled out of some piece of equipment. I'm not even sure what it was. And uh, I think even the fins are stainless steel. And uh, I have it mounted underneath the cart. And let's get, take a better look at it. I'm sorry this has to be handheld because uh, my tripod won't go low enough. But uh, back here, we have um, the radiator, which is kind of weird. Um, and... Um, I've got 220 millimeter fans blowing this way through the radiator. I try to look at the the way the pipe ran in the radiator, and I try to make the uh, the pipe that's the cold, where the water is the coldest run back into the reservoir. And cutting the stainless steel plate was very difficult. I had to use cooling with a jigsaw, and actually I used that mist cooling to do that. Yeah. Uh, looking underneath the cart, this is the radiator. Um, these are the two cooling fans way back there. That's the VFD right there. There's actually a power pack, a 12 volt power pack that was left over from something that powers these fans. Oddly, I think that this is a linear power supply. I don't think it's a switcher. This, of course, is the stainless steel plate. I had to cut two big holes in, and I had used the cooling system, which is shown in this video, in order to cool the blade down to do that. Um, what I did in the back of this radiator is just put some duct tape. At some point, maybe I'll make a little aluminum cover here to look really nice and then duct tape it back on. And um, I had an issue with these fittings because these are, these are some kind of metric fittings. And um, not knowing exactly what fitting, I think there's some kind of like a GAC kind of class Japanese fitting. And uh, this might be... Uh, I have no idea exactly what this is, and I couldn't financially, on a fixed income, just order parts and hope they'll fit. And I happen to have two little brass um, barbs here. These are called barbs, and uh, they fit a hose. And what I did was I, I sanded these down a little bit, and I put them inside of uh, these other fittings, which are welded onto the, uh, the stainless steel radiator, and I sweated the fittings on. One of these fittings worked right the first time. The second one, I had to re-solder or re-sweat four times to get it to work, maybe five. And uh, my flux is old, and um, it wasn't even real silver solder, so it's just basically tin lead solder. And oddly, this works. And uh, um, I haven't had any problems once I got it initially soldered well. And this radiator is put on with some uh, right angle brackets, kind of... Uh, kind of a local hardware stores thing. I happen to fortunately have them kicking around and uh, so it seems to work pretty good. Um, a, a word of caution, right now I have no fan uh, covers on here. This thing got me bad and you really have to be careful if you don't have fan covers. You should really put fan covers. Right now the uh, fans are going and you could hear, I'm speaking about as loud as I did before, so this is probably about 
Uh, I think under here it's probably about 70 decibels, which is quite noteworthy. Um, out um, when you're standing up, it's probably about 50 or something. It's not so bad. Every once in a while, you might be able to see a little bubble go through the hose when the machine first starts. There goes one right there. Um, when the machine first starts up, um, it'll bleed all the air out, and um, after a minute, it seems to be pretty stable. And uh, so I was worried about cavitation and stuff with the radiator, but it seems to prime itself and do pretty well. And uh, every once in a while, maybe we'll, maybe we'll see another one go by. Or maybe not. I'm sorry about this handheld, um, but you can see underneath the cart here, I've got um, this little container. And um, this is, oddly enough, an ammo container. And it has a rubber gasket, so if it falls over, um, water won't gush out. It'll probably leak, but it, um, but it probably won't gush out. And there's probably about two gallons of water here. Maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. The container has a, a bell type um, uh, latch on it, and uh, if I hold it open, you can see I have the pump inside, suction cup down. Way in back, you might be able to see, I've got grommets for both the hoses and the, um, the power wires. Uh, if you're going to drill a hole in a plastic box like this, keep it away from the edges, that way um, it won't crack as easily. We're at the back of the machine, this is the radiator, and if the air is blowing out this way, I've got a half a scrap of paper, and you can see that... Uh, you know, I've got, I have, I have a decent amount of airflow. Even though this is a pretty wide area, this is probably, uh, you know, at least 120 millimeters square, and I'm sure there's some loss in the, in the fan blade. So I'm pretty happy with that, and uh, I've never felt warm air come out of here. So, and uh, the uh, cooling system seems to work pretty well. So looking at this cooling solution, I've got a bottle here. This is oddly a bottle from Francesco Rinaldi spaghetti sauce. And it works well for this purpose because the walls are really heavy. And uh, what happened was I came up with this nozzle. I'd hoped to be able to use uh, this nozzle just with the ventry effect. And um, unfortunately, my compressor doesn't have enough of flow. So what I did was I pressurized this container and I don't recommend you use just any container, actually, for um, for the uh, maybe 20 pounds, 20, 25 pounds of pressure. This Francesco Rinaldi uh, container seems to work pretty well. And all the air pressure goes into here, and some of this air pressure pushes the liquid through the valves into the ventry. So I cheated. Um, and I went through five different nozzle designs, and this is the um, this is, was the best out of five. And this is really embarrassing; I didn't get this to work, but I couldn't spend any more time with it. As you can see, I've got two of these pin valves here. One of these shut, shuts it completely off, and the other one just changes the flow. These are standard like uh, standard connectors. I made this kind of hacked together uh, little adapter here. There's such low pressure; I could just push these together, and they'll stay uh, usually. And um, there was just two, uh, two of these little angled things, and they're threaded in, and I made some little washers out of, like, um, some scrap plastic. And they're, th they're um, like, basically bolted or screwed through this as pipe fittings. And uh, there's a little bracket here and some Velcro to hold this on so I could take this off when I'm not using it. And this rides and shows along with the, uh, the axis. Back here underneath the machine, I've got two little tiny air compressors. These are tiny. These are really vacuum pumps, but you can hook them up uh, differently so you can use them for, uh, for uh, air compressors. And that's what I did. I used two hoses. And I've got two of these little fittings here. And uh, I 3D printed a little block to make a two-to-one thing. And um, and then I've got a little outlet here. There's a little switch to override it. And there's a... You probably can't see it, but... But deep in there, underneath right here, there's a, um, a digital relay, which I happen to have laying around. And uh, so this just barely puts enough of pressure and flow to do the job, but it does do the job. And it's pretty quiet, too. Here I have some cooling mist concentrate. This happens to be... Uh, Cool Mist 77. Um, I've mixed it up in this container here. I tend to make it up stronger than um, the, the directions that you need to. Um, I'm using this mostly in, a, in a, an open environment. So if you're going to use this in a closed or, or a confined space, you should probably use some kind of respiration because it is aerosols. And it's uh, 
I mean, I don't think it's dangerous like chlorinated oils, but I think it's not safe like like cranberry juice or something like that, spraying that in the air. And um, so uh, once again, I've, I've uh, mixed this up a little bit stronger than you need it, and uh, a little goes a long way. Oddly enough, with this on, you can see it does put out coolant and um, a fair amount of air, not as much as I'd like. And... Um, and I use this not only for milling aluminum, but also for uh, cutting the stainless steel for the fans and stuff like this. When I get done, I shut off the valve and I keep this elevated to make sure it doesn't siphon out just in case. Next, we have this contraption. So I have no commercial dust collector. And uh, however, I did have a, a small vacuum that I had no uh, bags for. It was an old Dirt Devil, and um, it was a good little vacuum cleaner. And um, but I couldn't find bags for it anymore, not, at least not locally. And so I made this box for it. So there's threaded inserts in here, and this clamps down. There's a couple baffles and foam in it, and uh, this is like a two two hour three hour project. And uh, and uh, so the good thing is that this thing puts out a lot of uh, suction so if I pull off this cover we've got a little uh, a little motor here and uh, these are the brushes these are uh, the coils just not plugged in at all and uh, this is the armature right here um, I have a problem with this uh, that the armature seems to walk back and forth and it it changes how the brushes seat on the armature and it's very bad and it squeals like a banshee at times um, but uh, when it works without squealing, it does work. I've, um, it's just kind of clamped. I make these little clamps out of some scrap metal and stuff. And I've got a, uh, uh, and I have a little cover here that just slips on. This is made out of an old Folgers uh, coffee thing. It fits on like that. And if you're going to make something like this, use something like this, you have to be careful. This thing puts out a lot of sparks. The brushes, especially wearing brushes, put out a tremendous amount of sparks. So if you have an open gas flame and acetylene torch, and by the way, I do know somebody that was burned badly from an acetylene torch accident, so it does happen. Or um, also, you should keep this away from flammable stuff. These are wire nuts, and this is fairly safe like this. I've got strain relief here. Uh, this is the original cable. Uh, the box is not it, the box itself is not convenient to empty. Uh, you take out these four screws and dump it out, but um, it works. So the thing to remember is that this is not a wet or dry bag. This is wood, and there's no float in it to shut off the motor if it fills up with water. And also, you should remember that it, once again, it sparks. Um, you know that the, the armature does spark on this motor a lot, and so you have to keep, we have to be careful about sources of ignition, uh, fumes, gases, torches, uh, flammable uh, paper, and stuff like that. Everything. Um, I also have to worry about you know the proximity between the computer and this, but it seems to work so fine so far. I mean, you don't want it to like you know scramble up your hard drive or anything. And um, also, this particular motor. The air from, from this goes right through the motor. So if you stuck this hose into a gasoline, it would shoot fire probably about three feet out of the end. And no, I'm not going to show that. But what I will show is the thing working. I'm going to clean up this. Because sawdust and chips tend to go everywhere uh, when running a machine like this. Um, the I think the best kind of grease to use is often. And um, so what I have here is just like the cheapest grease I can buy. Historically, I've also used this nice polyurea grease, and this stuff is really cool. Um, I also tried some John Deere polyurea grease, but it stunk so bad I couldn't have it in the garage. And I have to caution you, the polyurea grease from John Deere, the stuff that I had, was so bad and it smelled like they they took polyurea grease and they thinned it out or included diesel oil in it it smells like diesel oil and um beef or fuel and um and which you know the i i i don't think i could have a machine like this in the garage with that grease so this is parks uh, uh polyurea grease um as you can see i've used this quite a bit and this works really well it doesn't break down, it doesn't separate, and it doesn't stink. So this is really good grease if you can afford it. Um, but mostly I use this, um, it claims to be lithium. It's just plain, plain kind of 
clear grease. I'm not even sure if it's waterproof, but it doesn't really matter. And I just kind of scoop it into this grease gun for some of the fittings. I also use this for dispensing. So if I just squeeze it a little bit, so I can do this. But you can see a little bit just came out of there. And I use this just for um, putting a little dab there and dab there. And you can see by this spot here, the thing about grease is it tends to get everywhere. So I use this container to contain all this stuff to try to keep it under control. And because otherwise it will get everywhere. And this is where this is relegated to be. And uh, I feel bad about this. And maybe I'll wipe this on the machine somewhere. So these are the kinds of things I wanted to use the milling machine to make. Um, I've got a little woodworking project here and um, I milled this off uh, using the machine. And it's interesting as the adage goes that when you're holding a hammer everything looks like a nail and I suppose you could have done this with a bandsaw which I don't have and then sanded it and filed it and planed it and so forth. But um, the machine works well. It's basically moving you using your fingers just in a manual mode uh, to do it. For my amplifier experimentation, I made this new cabinet, and um, I, I, I 3D printed this. This is ABS, and um, it actually printed well with minimal warping because I printed it enclosed. Unfortunately, the um, it didn't separate very cleanly, and uh, maybe because of the heat I was using, I don't know. But what I did was I just clamped it down to the table and milled around the inside edge right along here and uh, it worked nice it worked so well I don't even think I filed it and um, this is um, at someday going to be for um, a, a camera pan rig this is a harmonic drive and a bearing setup and everything and I made these parts here using the machine and the surface finish is pretty good for this thing um, the surface finish is really nice, and I'm very happy with that. You can see there's extra holes because this is scrap metal. I used the machine to mill this round, and uh, I had little clamping issues, and I almost lost this part. I think one part of this is uh, is uh, uh, not really galled, but I've got a little, a little issue here with uh, surface finish because... Basically, the part started <laughs> it started becoming un unclamped, and but I'm very happy how uh, the surface finish. Generally, this machine does well.